Good morning friends, this is Yagyadev and I am presenting the current affair for the month of June. So we were discussing about various parts of the June current affair in which we saw that how tourism sector was growing across India and development of tourism sector was laid by the MICE incentive that is marriage men incentive customized and exhibition. So meeting incentive conference and exhibition is taken part in the perspective of MICE. So MICE event is to create a networking platform of government, industry as well as academia to promote the industry led development of tourism. So Paraton ke chhetra ka vikas karne ke liye industries aur government bodies ka ek saath collaboration karna MICE project ka main aim hai. Now the annual meeting, board meeting, product meeting and presentation training are launched in the MICE incentive and it is focused on the leisure. Then meeting targets the meeting of various agencies, incentive targets the incentive provided by the corporate sector to develop the tourism. Then conference, yearly or weekly conference or sessions to develop the knowledge about certain tourism sector, certain tourist places. So in tourist places ki knowledge ko enhance karne ke liye meeting hoti hai such as Himalayan region, Kulu, Manali, Rishikesh, Chardham, Hampi. So the tourist spots which need acute coverage by all the perspective by including the industries as well as academia such as the tourism development institutions as well as the perspective that funded by government in terms of pilgrimage rejuvenation scheme, Prasad and other tourism spot scheme by Uran, manifesto Uran 3 phase. So all such incentives are covered under this MICE then conferences meeting incentive conferences and exhibitions exhibitions by professionally knowledgeable person of the tourism sectors is also taken place and which also displays the events where there are various kind of exhibitions are taking place now next part is advantage of developing mice so mice is to be developed in order to cater the opportunities related to the tourism sector as well as the hospitality कहीं भी आप पर्यटन करने को जाते हैं, टूरिज्म करते हैं, then you see various kind of facilities around that area and that area is scattered by the mice facility by integrating the government scheme as well as the hotel industry as well as the supply chain mechanism to make your tourism healthy and happier. Then it is a year round business which goes throughout the year and mice has less than 1% share in the estimated global business, 1% share of global business is in mice, then mice traveler into leisure travelers that taken part into local government and private sector investment that result in the upgradation of general hospitality environment and destination. So hospitality karne ka matlab, jo bhi paratanar thi, darshadar thi kisi bhi tourist spot bhi ja rahe hain, unka dekh rahe hain. उनकी समुचित व्यवस्था करना, होटल में उनका ठहराव, उनके रहने की व्यवस्था, उनका पर्यटन का क्षेत्र, उनके लिए व्हीकल्स की फैसिलिटी, ऑल फैसिलिटीज आर डिस्कस्ड अंडर माइस स्कीम एस वेल एस द हेल्प ऑफ गवर्नमेंट इंस्टीट्यूशंस। सो नाउ देयर इज रिफॉर्म्स बेस्ड रिजल्ट्स लिंक इन रिवाम so various processes of government that sought to be problems in the electricity distribution for which we have Ujwal Discom scheme. So government ne Ujwal Discom scheme ko launch kiya by propagating the Discoms that is distribution companies for electricity throughout the year to the villages as well as all parts of the country. So, Recently, Union Cabinet approved the reform-based result incentive revamped distribution sector scheme 
which has operational efficiencies and financial sustainability of DISCOM power departments excluding power private sector DISCOMs also which leads to further enhancement of the DISCOMs and reduction of AT and C losses that is any that is automation and transmission losses in terms of corona and ferranti effect losses so when you will learn about the losses of electricity distribution then losses are incurred by ferranti effect and corona effect loss further at the transmission and distribution you need the transformer which makes the distribution of power by stepping up and stepping down that again slid the loss and which incurred by 12 to 15 percent by 24 and 25 then reduction of ACS and ARR gap to zero level by 24 and 25 this is the second target then third target is the improvement in the quality and quantity of the electrical supply as well as reliability and affordability of electricity supply as well as the consumption further the operationally efficient use of distribution sector is also propagated via Uzzal discom scheme then last goes for the development in institutional capabilities for the distribution of discoms remember these four points for your prelims as well as mains point of view now the scheme provides conditional financial assistance to the discom companies for strengthening support infrastructure so discom companies go conditional credit support di jati hai for period of time under this scheme so this scheme is very very important for 2022 prelims and which sector are eligible for this benefit so the discoms have to be scored minimum of 6% 60% of marks and clear the minimum of certain performance parameters that are under the aggregate technical and commercial losses and average cost of supply aggregate revenue realized gap those discom sectors which are lacking in ACS ATNC and ARR ATNC ARR and ACS losses so they will be provided the support through this scheme for infrastructure upgraded performance now looking into other parts of this scheme so the scheme subsumes is a scheme ke andar kya subsume ho rahe hain integrated power development scheme by the government in order to develop and distribute the power supply Then Deen Dayal Padhyay Gram Jyoti Yojana DDU GJY is also included and the next is Prime Minister Development Program 2015 for Union Territories of Jammu Kashmir and Ladakh is also subsumed under this scheme. So this one scheme caters all these three schemes. The funds for identified approved ongoing discoms are provided by the central government in order to develop the needs of these discom companies and the sectors which are lacking in their performance of economics as well as electricity distribution. Next part goes for consumer meter and system meters. So this meter have prepaid smart meter for all consumer except agricultural consumers and there is privatization of union territories remember these priorities are union territories amrut cities atal mission for rejuvenation and urban transformation those cities which are having amrut uh, facility then government offices and high loss areas these all are included in the prepaid smart meters then communicable ami advanced metering infrastructure advanced metering infrastructure is a communicable meter 
and all the feeders and distribution transformers. Further, it also for risk comms, it enables energy accounting leading better planning for loss reduction for consumer. It strengthens the DISCOM to provide better services to consumer and equivalent to 25 crore consumers are being provided to the electrical connectivity and it allows the consumer to monitor their electricity consumption on a routine basis. Yani ki ye ko electricity ka proper consumption provide karta hai mitro. Saath saath it also reduces the burden on the government in order to have this electrical system. Then second part goes for the feeder segregation. Jo bhi feeders hain, unke segregation ke liye funding for feeder segregation. For unsegregated feeder is also provided. Convergence with the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Urja Sraksha, even Uthan Mahavyan is also provided. That is, it is added in the Kusum scheme. Remember that. And solarization of feeders will be lead to cheap free daytime power to irrigation and additional income for the farmer. Remember this point for your prelims as well as mains point of view. Now how electricity is being produced and transmitted to the various areas of countries we will see into that that is a power plant which generates the electricity in terms of thermal electricity generation by use of turbine and that energy is step down transformer by voltage so it steps up the voltage that is 50 hertz frequency to 20 volt and that is transmitted to the village areas by making a huge supply through the transmitter cables. So, you can see in the city or in the city, there are big transmission towers where there is transmission transmission to 220 kV and that is taken to the neighborhood transformer in the grid substation. So, power grids or grid substations mein ye supply reaches jati hai and that supply is taken to the village area distribution and step down to another transformer which is provided to the domestic household supply. So, gharelu use ke liye ye domestic electricity again 220 volt mein pahunchai jati hai and this is 1,32,000 volt. Transformers on pole step down electricity before entering the houses. So, is prakar se production, distribution and transmission hota hai. Now, distribution of electricity is a hectic process that leads to losses. Distribution may losses hote hain in terms of corona and ferenti loss. So, isko cover karne ke liye discom companies aati hain that takes the loan from the government of India in order to develop the electricity generation as well as the transformation. Now, what is aggregate technical and commercial loss? Technical loss represent to the loss of waste during the transmission. During the transmission, there is corona loss, ferenti loss and transformer loss. So, transformer may humming loss, as a kai sare loss hote hain, which leads the playing of various kind of commercial losses and which leads to reduction in revenue collection due to inefficient billing and payment system. So, jab bhi ye transmission hota hai mitro from the generation to transmission unit, waha pe kush na kush loss hote rathe hain and that loss are leading to reduction in the collection and payment of default. India's agriculture export. Krishi Shetra ki agar baat kare, the agriculture sector has been remarkably doing well during the pandemic period. Koi lockdown honne ke baujud bhi agriculture sector ne bahut hi achche prakar se apna yogdaan diya. We saw that the agriculture products were quite heavily developed during the lockdown period and the agriculture produce was on quite rise and it registered a growth of 18% over the previous years. Yani ki previous years growth was quite low but
in 2021 there was 41.8 billion us dollar of growth and it led to agri export ecosystem india has been net exporter of agri products since the year of 1991 so india has been a heavy exporter of agri products such as milk cheese ghee as well as rice wheat fruits तो इन सारे एग्रीकल्चर प्रोड्यूस के हम एक्सपोर्टर रहे हैं कॉटन शुगर केन जैगरी जूट ये सारी चीजें भारत से बाहर के देशों में निर्यात की जाती हैं एंड नाउ वी सी दैट द टोटल एग्रीकल्चर एक्सपोर्ट बास्केट अकाउंट्स फॉर 2.5 परसेंट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड्स एग्रीकल्चर ट्रेड पूरे विश्व के ट्रेड का टू पॉइंट एग्रीकल्चर मार्केट का ट्रेड है एंड मेजर एक्सपोर्ट डेस्टिनेशन फेयर यूएसए सऊदी अरबिया नेपाल बांग्लादेश ईरान एंड द की एग्रीकल्चर कमोडिटीज गोज फॉर बासमती राइस बफेलो मीट स्पाइसेस नॉन बासमती राइस कॉटन रॉ ऑयल मील्स शुगर कैस्टर ऑयल एंड चाय ये सारी चीजें एक्सपोर्ट की जाती हैं now we should look into the graph that indicates the agriculture products imports during year 2004 5 to the year 2021 in which we see agriculture export are quite rising near around 20% of export 20% ke around mein hum export kar rahe hain mitro and we have agriculture import of around 10% तो 10% का क्या हो रहा है इंपोर्ट हो रहा है बट 20% का एक्सपोर्ट हो रहा है सो देर इज अगेन अ डबल इफेक्ट इन द प्रोडक्ट्स दैट वी आर एक्सपोर्टिंग इन द मार्केट जब हमारे पास ज्यादा पैदावार हो रही हैं इन टर्म्स ऑफ फ्रूट्स राइस वीट वेजिटेबल ऑयल टी कॉफी स्पाइसेस तो उनका हम डायरेक्टली डबल ग्रोथ करके हम उन्हें एक्सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं देन एग्री एक्सपोर्ट from india 2021 22 in this graph we see that 21.1% of agriculture export is being done and 11.0% of agri export in terms of marine products marine products are 21% rice is 21% and marine product are 12% so we see that this data of value of total agri export shows for 41.8 billion of export throughout the world bharat ke dwara 41.8 billion dollar ka export kiya ja raha hai in agriculture utpad ke dwara that were remain in the surplus during the covid pandemic period also now the related information shows that agriculture first agriculture export facilitation center aefc India's first AEFC established by the Mahatma Chamber of Commerce Industry. So A A F E C A E F C was established by Mahatma Chamber of Commerce Industries and Agriculture. Remember this fact. Then again, it is a key word for your PT and mains. Then there is help from NABARD, the Agriculture Bank. नेशनल एग्रीकल्चर बैंक फॉर रूरल डेवलपमेंट के द्वारा इसे क्रेडिट हेल्प मिल रहा है इट आल्सो हेम्स फॉर बूस्टिंग द एग्रीकल्चर एंड फूड एक्सपोर्ट्स ऑफ महाराष्ट्र फॉर डिसमिनेटिंग नीड बेस्ड इंफॉर्मेशन प्रोवाइडिंग टाइमली गाइडेंस फॉर द स्टेक होल्डर यानी कि जो भी स्टेक होल्डर्स हैं उसमें पार्टिसिपेट कर रहे हैं इन टर्म्स ऑफ बैंक एंड अदर बिजनेस कॉर्पोरेट हाउसेज उन सभी को फंडिंग नाबार्ड के द्वारा हो रही है एंड दे ऑल आर गेटिंग need based dissemination further one stop destination to provide exporters all possible extensions assistances all the exporters are provided with assistances for their export duty and gst okay to so, isse export hamare desh mein zyada se zyada badh raha hai aur zyada se zyada duri tak हम एक्सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं नाउ वी आर हैविंग एग्री स्टैक इन द न्यूज सो व्हाट इज एग्री स्टैक डिजिटलाइजेशन ऑफ एग्रीकल्चरल डेटा 
description of agri data is called as the agri stake and that works for the farmers right and digital rights flag in the concern over government creating agri stack. So, what is agri stack? Agri stack is the collection of technologies and digital database proposed by the union government that focused on farmers database as well as the data taken by the farmers under the agricultural logistics. So, agriculture se based jo bhi production hai or products hai in terms of agri goods, fruits, vegetables, un sabhi ka database ikattha karke ek digital platform pe dalna agri stack hai. Now, agri stack proposes by Niti Aayog, National Institute for Transforming India ke dwara agri stack propose kiya gaya hai. That leads creation of common data infrastructure for the government to reduce duplication of fits many startups and the researchers in the areas lower barrier of entry to creating agri tech products now identification of data sources and collection of data to so, agri stack mein kya kya measures liye jate hain dosto first is identification of data sources and collection of data pehle data jitne bhi hain kahan pe kaun se products nikal rahe hain fruits vegetables commodities un sab ka data identify karna second is processing of data into a create data and desired format usko ek desired format mein data ko taiyar karna ki is district mein aisa product nikal raha hai suppose mango is coming from this bagalpur uh, then there is lychee from mujafferpur there is something so aise karke ek database taiyar karna and creation of channels for continuous access of data now ye jo data तैयार हो गया इसको चैनलाइज किया जाता है एंड दिस चैनल इज एड फॉर द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ एप्लीकेशन दैट यूजेस द डेटा अब इसे ऐप में फीड किया जाता है नाउ दिस इज एन ऐप फॉर एग्जांपल एग्री स्टैक ऐप तो इस ऐप में अब ये सारे डेटाबेस किसी भी इन्वेस्टर को मिल जाएंगे जो किसी भी एग्री प्रोडक्ट्स या कमोडिटीज में इन्वेस्ट करना चाहते हैं उसकी सारी प्रोफाइलिंग डिटेल्स किस जिले में वो पैदाइश हो रही है उसकी क्वालिटी कैसी है हाउ इज द इफिशियंट प्रोडक्ट दैट ऑल आर डिस्कस इन द एग्री स्टैक ऐप प्रोपोज स्टैक वुड सिग्निफिकेंटली ईज प्रोसेस ऑफ डेवलपिंग वायबल सोल्यूशन फॉर द एग्रीकल्चरल सेक्टर एंड इनेबल इंक्रीज इन द रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट तो रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट को भी बढ़ावा देने के लिए ये एग्री स्टैक वर्क कर रहा है मित्रों नाउ इट चैलेंजेस इन द एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर सो देयर इज चैलेंजेस इन एआई एंड डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजी सो आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस और डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजी में एग्रीकल्चरी चीजों को लाने में बहुत सारी चैलेंजेस हैं उन्हें हम देखते हैं सो फाइनेंशियल प्रॉब्लम देयर इज प्रॉब्लम ऑफ फाइनेंसिंग दैट इज पुअर एक्सेस टू क्रेडिट एंड इंफॉर्मेशन लोन का नहीं मिल पाना वहाँ तक जहाँ पे लोग कोई भी कमोडिटीज को प्रोड्यूस कर रहे हैं सच एज कोई भी फ्रूट्स या वेजिटेबल्स किसी डिस्टेंट लोकेलिटी में प्रोड्यूस हो रही है तो वहाँ तक फाइनेंसेस को नहीं मिल पाना दैन लो पोटेंशियल टू सॉल्व वाई आर डिजिटल एंड एआई मेथड्स वहाँ तक फैसिलिटीज को नहीं पहुँचना और ए के द्वारा उसको नहीं मीट कर पाना दैट इज़ अ प्रॉब्लम दैन सेकेंड प्रॉब्लम इज़ फार्म इनपुट स्मॉल एंड होल्ड साइजिंग कहीं भी कोई भी कृषि क्षेत्र अगर छोटा है उसके क्षेत्र में कम पैदावार हो रही है दैट अगेन मेक्स द चैलेंज ड्यू टू लैक ऑफ इरिगेशन कवरेज कहीं पे सिंचाई की व्यवस्था सही से नहीं है देन देर इज लैक ऑफ स्प्रिंकल एंड ड्रिप इरिगेशन देन पुअर मैकेनाइजेशन ऑफ फार्म्स फार्म्स का मैकेनाइजेशन इज वेरी पुअर देन हाई डिपेंडेंस फॉर रेनफॉल ऑफ वाटर नेक्स्ट इज द फार्मिंग मेथोडोलॉजी फार्मिंग गोज फॉर डिक्रीज इन सॉइल फर्टिलिटी एंड लैक ऑफ क्रॉप डाइवर्सिफिकेशन देन गोज फॉर पेस्ट इन्फेक्शन एंड लीडिंग टू क्रॉप लॉस पेस्ट के द्वारा जो फसलें हैं उनको इन्फेक्ट किया जाना एंड आफ्टर यूजिंग द पेस्टिसाइड यू फाउंड दैट डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ क्रॉप इन चेंजिंग क्रॉपिंग पैटर्न दिज आर ऑल द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर then selling distribution wastage supply chain exploitation by farmers and poor market discovery mechanism further the challenges of digital technology is 
financing so growth of agriculture solution startup under finances goes for insurance payout link to weather field data then data backed credit risk assessment which goes for ai enabled solutions that solutions which are artificial intelligence based that are again facing challenges in the market then we have the farmer input which has information dissemination through chat then tech enabled agri extensions of services which leads to online market for agriculture inputs further farming goes for the precious farming using iot and remote control then predictive post and management for the prediction of monsoon good weather condition precipitation drought and all kind of weather information then real time yield information forecasting koi bhi real time yield ho rahi hai to uske information ki forecasting karna bhi zaruri hai this data makes help to the farmers as well as entrepreneurs as well as upsc aspirants to write it in your prelims as well as mains point of view now next point is data security concern raised against agri stack is the data security which again makes for financial exploitation and exclusion error so error that is incurred by exclusion of database so if there is digitalization of data and that not face the real needful meet of the customers as well as the entrepreneurs then it will lead the exclusion error so the data protection legislation without such safeguard private entities could exploit farmers data agar proper kanun us pe nahi banaye jate hain to ye sare kisanon ke data entrepreneurs or corporates ke paas chale jayenge and they can exploit that data for their personal use for example pepsico pepsico ki chips rajasthan mein ban rahi thi और उसके बाद जैसे ही ये वो डेटा उनके पास अवेलेबल हुआ उन्होंने फार्मर्स पे ही केस कर दिया एंड फार्मर्स आर डूइंग प्रोटेटो प्रोडक्शन एट द लोकल लेवल हाउ पैथेटिक इज दैट फॉर द कॉर्पोरेट नाउ वंस फिनटेक कंपनीज आर एबल टू कलेक्ट द ग्रेनुअल डेटा ऑफ फार्मर ऑपरेशन दे मे ऑफर द सीरियस टॉप ऑफ इंटरेस्ट प्रिसाइजली इन द डायरेक्ट नीड ऑफ द क्रेडिट दो corporates can directly use the credit for their personal use then making the land record of the basis of farmer database may exclude tenant farmers share coppers and agriculture laborers from the centralized database centralized database se tenants or share coppers ko ye alag kar sakta hai and that is digital access leading to massive gap between the digital access and the literacy of the country bahut sare kisano ke paas gramin kshetro mein pure bharat ke beech digital knowledge ki information hi nahi hai bahut sare kisano ko theek se padhna likhna bhi nahi aata hai due to which there is a high gap between the learned corporate people and the non educated the farmer sector who are facing challenges of their agricultural products now next part we see that the government efforts towards the digitalization of agriculture by ai showing app government has already made the ai showing app jisme ki sari information about agriculture ground and products such as ganna ki kheti ho rahi hai to ganne ke khet mein kaisi vyavastha hai how is the environment of the sugar cane how is the product quality wo sari cheeze yahan pe humko dekhne ko milti hain it also has the bank from international crop research institute icri semi arid tropic which applies for the advisory to the farmers regarding the optical data seed showing yani ki bija ropan ke samay mein मृदा की अवस्था कैसी है मिट्टी की व्यवस्था कैसी है उपजाऊ क्षमता कितनी है उसमें क्या न्यूट्रिएंट्स किसानों को डालना चाहिए ताकि पैदावार अच्छे से अच्छी हो सके फसल की क्वालिटी बढ़ाई जा सके प्रोडक्शन बढ़ाई जा सके उसकी सारी इंफॉर्मेशन इस ऐप पे इक्री सेट के द्वारा दिया जा रहा है 
and that is again partner with the IBM and Niti Aayog. So Niti Aayog, IBM has partnered for the development of crop yield production model backed by artificial intelligence which provides the real time data. So any land area holder, any farmer, jise kuch समझ में नहीं आ रहा है कि अब मौसम परिवर्तित हो रहे हैं इन्वायरमेंटल चेंजेस आ रहे हैं कौन सी फसल लगाएं जिसकी पैदावार अच्छी हो तो वो मिट्टी की क्षमता देखेगा मिट्टी की क्षमता जानने के लिए वो सॉइल हेल्थ कार्ड और सच एआई ऐप को यूज़ कर सकते हैं और उसके साथ साथ वो उसकी सारी डिटेल्स प्राप्त कर सकते हैं और उसके हिसाब से फर्टिलाइजर्स मैन्योर्स ऑर्गेनिक वेस्ट और और बीजों को उपयोग कर सकते हैं ताकि पैदावार अच्छी हो सके नेक्स्ट पार्ट इज हॉर्टिकल्चर सो वॉट इज हॉर्टिकल्चर फ्रेंड्स बाग बगीचे लगाना बागवानी तो बागवानी फसलें यानी कि छोटे छोटे बागान लीची के अमरूद के है ना सो दिस ऑल कम अंडर दी परसूट ऑफ हॉर्टिकल्चर बम्बू प्लांटेशन देन ओमिकॉन प्लांटेशन देन ट प्लांटेशन दैर प्रोमीग्रेनेट गुआवा मैंगो पीपल पलपूड ऑल आर अंडर दी हॉर्टिकल्चर यूनियन एग्रीकल्चर मिनिस्टर लॉन्च दी हॉर्टिकल्चर क्लस्टर डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम सी डी पी विच इंश्योर फॉरेस्टिक ग्रोथ ऑफ हॉर्टिकल्चर एंड देर आर ट्वेल्व हॉर्टिकल्चर क्लस्टर बाई नेशनल हॉर्टिकल्चर बोर्ड गवर्नमेंट ने क्या बना दिया एन एच बी दैट इज राष्ट्रीय हॉर्टिकल्चर बोर्ड इस बोर्ड की जिम्मेदारी क्या है मित्रों दिस बोर्ड लुक्स इन टू ऑल द प्लांटेशन क्रॉप इन साइड द कंट्रीज कितनी बगीचे हैं कितनी बागवानी हो रही हैं कितनी पैदावार हो रही हैं उन सभी की डिटेल्स हॉर्टिकल्चर बोर्ड के पास रहती है एंड देर आर ट्वेल्व हॉर्टिकल्चर क्लस्टर तो हॉर्टिकल्चर क्लस्टर कितने हो गए बारह and out of that 53 clusters are on pilot basis this 12 clusters are on pilot basis among 53 clusters 12 out of 53 clusters are on pilot basis in which 10 lakh farmers from 11 state uts will covering the large geographical specialization and integrated market led development making indian horticulture cluster very competitive so we see that india has highest production of mango lychee guava pomegranate which is exported in the global market that is the key fact now mission for integrated development of horticulture for horticulture development we have under the government of india centrally sponsored scheme midh is centrally sponsored scheme so bagwani faslon ki kheti baadi ke liye ek centrally sponsored scheme laya gaya bharat sarkar ke dwara that is midh that is mission for integrated development of horticulture which contributes 60% of total outlay for development programs in all the states except the northeastern himalayas नॉर्थ ईस्ट स्टेट्स और हिमालयन स्टेट को छोड़ के सारे स्टेट्स को लिया गया एंड गवर्नमेंट कंट्रीब्यूट नाइन्टी परसेंट इन दिस नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न स्टेट पार्ट ऑफ सेंट्रल सेक्टर स्कीम एंड सेंट्रली स्पॉन्सर्ड स्कीम सो ये केंद्र के द्वारा प्रायोजित योजना है सेंट्रली स्पॉन्सर्ड स्कीम now midh provides technical advice and administrative support to the state that is state horticulture mission for saffron mission kesar ki kheti ke liye that is again an huge export product then we are having rashtriya kisan vikas yojana and krishi vikas yojana national mission for sustainable agriculture which promotes the research and development technology in terms of agriculture product it also adopt in twin holistic approach covering pre production it also provides improved productivity through diversification extension of appropriate technology etc further it provides the post harvest management system processing of value addition and marketing infrastructure it also promote partnership 
कन्वर्जेंस एंड सिनर्जी एमोंग रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट यानी कि मार्केट में जो अवेलेबल कंपनीज हैं उनको इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर प्रोवाइड करना रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट मार्केटिंग स्ट्रेटजीज एज वेल एज द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ ए होलिस्टिक पैटर्न ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर प्रोडक्ट डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन दैट अगेन पार्ट ऑफ मार्केटिंग एजेंसी इट ऑल्सो प्रमोट द फार्मर प्रोड्यूसर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन तो ये एफ को भी प्रमोट कर रहा है फर्दर इज सपोर्ट दी कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग यानी कि ये एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर को प्रमोट करता है ये मार्केटिंग भी करता है साथ साथ इट लीड्स टू मार्केटिंग ऑफ द फार्मर्स एज वेल एज देयर प्रमोशन इन द ग्लोबल मार्केट फर्दर द मिशन गोज फॉर सब स्कीम्स ऑफ नेशनल हॉर्टिकल्चर मिशन सो इट गोज फॉर नेशनल हॉर्टिकल्चर मिशन इन ऑल स्टेट यूट इज एक्सेप्ट नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न एंड हिमालयन रीजन को छोड़ के देन हॉर्टिकल्चर मिशन फॉर नॉर्थ ईस्ट एंड हिमालयन स्टेट पहले मिशन में हमने नॉर्थ ईस्ट और हिमालय रीजन को छोड़ दिया था नाउ एन एम ई एच मिशन दैट इज सेकेंड मिशन इंक्लूड्स नॉर्थ ईस्ट एंड हिमालयन स्टेट ऑल्सो एंड ऑल स्टेट ऑफ नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न एंड हिमालय देन नेशनल बम्बू मिशन राष्ट्रीय बांस मिशन जिसमें कि ऑल स्टेट्स एंड यूनियन टेरिटरीज इंक्लूडेड हैं देन नेशनल हॉर्टिकल्चर बोर्ड अ बोर्ड फॉर द हॉर्टिकल्चर डेवलपमेंट एंड यूनियन टेरिटरीज फोकसिंग ऑन कमर्शियल हॉर्टिकल्चर देन कोकोनट डेवलपमेंट बोर्ड नारियल विकास बोर्ड बनाया इन ऑल स्टेट्स यूनियन टेरिटरीज वेयर नारियल इज बींग प्रोड्यूस्ड देन Central Institute of Horticulture. Sixth, remember all these six part for your prelims and mains. That is, Central Institute for Horticulture, especially in the north eastern areas, which are having huge resource of bamboo plantation and plantation of tea, coffee, chai. Ki sabse jyada kheti hoti hai north eastern areas mein, and also development for capacity building. Now. Looking the data of major horticulture production, this chart shows that Karnataka goes for 6.9 percent of production and Gujarat 7.2 percent, but Andhra Pradesh is 7.9 and Maharashtra 8.0 percent, but Madhya Pradesh goes for 8.4 percent and West Bengal highest production of 10.2, but higher than that is Uttar Pradesh. incurring 12.6% of production and remaining state goes for 22.4 use this data as fodder for your prelims point of view now area in million hectare goes for 25.74 2018 then 26.4 2019 2020 27% production in million tons 311.5 320.7 and 326 in this current year of 2021 22 horticulture vis a vis food grain production we saw that horticulture production was quite high during the period of 2021 so we see that the data goes for 2001 traces to 153 223 257 to 65 in a year of 2013 and 284 in 2017 and 18 so jaise jaise krishi ke kshetra badhava de rahe hain sarkar unki taraf dhyan de rahi hai aur plantation crops plantation food fruits plantation trees are growing lot more than the existing pattern and that leads to highest production of 311.6 million ton at the end of 2017 and 18 तो आप इस डेटा को याद रखेंगे फॉर प्लिम्स एज वेल एज मेन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू नाउ लुकिंग इन टू द ग्राफ ऑफ इंडिया विच इंडिकेट द नेशनल लेवल प्रोडक्शन ऑफ द हॉर्टिकल्चर प्रोड्यूस तो हाइएस्ट प्रोडक्शन गोज फॉर महाराष्ट्र महाराष्ट्र में सबसे ज्यादा पैदावार है जिसमें कि अराउंड ट्वेंटी फाइव टू थर्टी परसेंट और थर्टी मिलियन टन्स ऑफ हॉर्टिकल्चर क्रॉप नेक्स्ट गोज फॉर the state of andhra pradesh which goes for 10 to 15% of agriculture then next is telangana and odisha telangana mein kitna percent hai mitro you see that telangana incurs a delivery of 15 to 
and Odisha 5 to 10% and Tamil Nadu again goes for 5 to 10 percent. So, Maharashtra is yielding highest production of plantation crops in the whole chart. Remember this for your prelims as well as mains point of view. Now, next thing is the key fact of cotton cultivation. So, cotton again remains the very important part of India's export for its inculcation in the textile as well as the supply chain system. So, cotton has been again for earlier time memorial to the present generation, cotton has been exported to the western countries. Cotton ki sabse yadhe paidawar British kaal in samay mein bhi rahi hai. In post independence era, we saw that cotton has been largely product during the Maharashtra and the black soil area. So, cotton has been largely produced under the 38% of global cotton coverage in Maharashtra and Karnataka area where there is a black soil and it is second largest grower after China. So, India is second largest producer of cotton. Then second point is Indian farmer grows four species of cultivated cotton that is Gosepium arboretum desi cotton, Herbaceum that is Asian cotton, Gosepium barbadesia that is third kind of cotton, Egyptian cotton and Gosepium hisurtum that is American upland cotton. These four kind of cotton are produced in India. These are very very important and UPSC can ask that what eliminate that what is not in the cotton which is not grown in India. So, this is again a UPSC kind of fact. Then again 80 percent of cotton grown in India are BT cotton hybrids. We see that there was a huge issue in the global market and WTO regarding the BT cotton production, bachelor's thungi genesis cotton which is again produced by using a bacteria and a variety of G. hirstum. So, remember this for your films also. Then livelihood goes for 60 million of people that are feeding on the cotton agriculture production. 60 million se adhik ki abadi cotton chhetra mein directly kheti karke apna jeevi ka chalati hai. Then there is 40 to 50 million people employed in the cotton trade and its processing. Then cotton textile industry employs the highest number of people in the country and around 4 percent of the GDP. Yani ki GDP ka 4 pratishat cotton production industry karti hai. Then in 2018-19, Textile clothing has been exporting 12 percent of cotton textiles. Barav Pratishat ka export cotton textile industry ke dwara kiya ja raha hai. And 900 metric tons of cotton was exported. Now remember this data for your prelims as well as mains point of view. It's very very important friends. Next point goes for the crop improvement that is genetic enhancement with reference to climate change developed epigenetically and engineered cotton for higher productivity then early maturing variety of cotton yani ki we see that we are using hybrid cotton seeds so hybrid cotton bt cotton ka use kar rahe hain jo ki zyada paidawar kar raha hai then Robust genetic source for the abiotic resistance, salinity, drought and heat tolerance. Then crop production is the conservation of agriculture measures. So technologies are being developed by scientists to develop the crop production as well as conserve the soil which is yielding the crop production. And biological weed management, weed management by using biological bacteria and manures for also the nutritional management for water and mechanization of the operations to substitute labor drudgery. We saw that the cop, uh, cotton is a kharif crop. So, cotton jo hai kharif crop hai or it needs 6 month of sowing and 6 month of ripening season. Then cotton ke liye 200 millimeter ka paani hona chahiye. Cotton ke liye 30 to 40 degree temperature constantly for 6 months hona chahiye 
that is again very crucial for India's tropical location on the geographical map. Then plant protection is there which boost for integrated pest management scheme and insect resistance management scheme which is launched by government in order to protect the cotton seeds and cotton yield. Then further there is a white flies and rapid diagrammatic institute for the tools specially for cryptic incense and disease resistance cotton production. Then seed science and technology for the cotton generation goes for hybrid seeds and neuroscience series and simple and cost effective genetic purity testing methods for the commercial hybrids other than the research and pollination for the seeds and production of the quantity. Remember this all four part for the development of cotton technology in India. Now next part goes for the semiconductor manufacturing. Now semiconductor has been highest part of the electronic segments which is being developed all across the world. Semiconductor chhetra ke vikas se hi sare mobile phones, televisions, bulbs, filaments, cameras, TVs, computer parts and all the electronic things work on the basis of semiconductor. Semiconductor is a device that is uh, NP dubbed conductor which has an inductance as well as resistance. Semiconductor devices also act as a switching device for various electronic circuits. Then we have MOSFET metal oxide semiconductor field defect transistor which also acts as a switching device and which controls the various kind of semi electric and hybrid electric operations. So semiconductor manufacturing yields gloss up to 60% of world GDP or uske production ke liye government of India has pushed lot into the semiconductor. So semiconductor has essential devices for military system, transportation, clean energy, solar energy and other appliances semiconductor by silicon, germanium and other doped materials with the other aluminium or arsenide metals, germanium metals that leads to free flow of electron with a high rate. Now semiconductor leads to two types of conductance that is n type semiconductor. Pahla semiconductor hota hai mitro, n type semiconductor jis mein ki doping hoti hai. electrons ki in comparison to the protons that is n type semiconductor and in p type semiconductor there is presence of protons that is p type biased and less electrons. So it is positively doped conductor and that again leads to a reactance in the circuit. So circuit may reactance paida karta hai or n type semiconductor inductance paida karta hai. That again acts as a LCR circuit for creating a resistance to the higher flow of electricity. So electricity ki matra agar jade aari kisi circuit mein aur usko hume reduce karna hai, controlled way mein lana hai, then we use the semiconductor devices. That is why semiconductors are using in the uh, satellites and the TV, laptops, cameras as well as the lights, street lights, bulbs, lights of the uh, um, cars and trucks and buses. So, is prakar se semiconductors kaam karte hain. And global semiconductor industry is dominated by United States, South Korea, Japan and Taiwan. And there is a market with 47% share followed by Korea a 19% share. Now India is also doing quite well in semiconductor industry by providing national policy on electronics launched in 2012. 2012 mein Manmohan Singh government ke dwara national policy on semiconductor launch ki gai and under this policy we are having the electronic system design and manufacturing sectors in India which provide 100% FDI route for investment in the semiconductor industry. Semiconductor devices ke production ke liye 
डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन के लिए मैन्युफैक्चरिंग के लिए एम्प्लॉयमेंट जनरेशन के लिए इंडियन गवर्नमेंट ने नेशनल पॉलिसी फॉर सेमी क्रिएट किया है एंड वी आर हैविंग एफ इन टर्म्स ऑफ सेमी एंड इलेक्ट्रॉनिक सिस्टम डिजाइन एंड मैन्युफैक्चरिंग फर्दर द बजट ऑफ टू थाउजेंड प्रोवाइड द increased modified special incentive package for the semiconductor industry and electronic development fund for the semiconductor industries further this year budget provides 44000 crore of impetus for the semiconductor chips and the semiconductor devices 44000 crore ka semiconductor package government ke dwara is budget mein diya gaya hai 2022 23 electronic manufacturing collector schemes that are providing the green field clusters and 75% of brown field cluster to so green field cluster kaise hote hain mitro remember that the cluster or the areas having no earlier development of industries they are bare lands khali field jo ki hare bhare maidan hain khali land hain jahan pe koi industry nahi hai aur wahan pe pehli industry lagai jani hai that is called as a green field area cluster in terms of brown field area cluster those areas which are having the presence of some industries earlier in the pre existing atmosphere that are called as the brown field clusters union cabinet has reconstituted in powered committee on setting up semiconductor wafer fabrication manufacturing and that facility by iesa and esdm industry which will benefit the government under make in india campaign so make in india campaign ke dwara mitro semiconductor industries ko badhava diya gaya hai and investment proposal worth 10000 crore that is us dollar 1.5 billion ka investment kiya gaya hai for next 2 years now one nation one standard that is recently research and design standards organization rds of indian railway has become first institute to declare one nation one standard that is a program to take the standardization of products which are being manufactured in india under one nation one standard तो इससे स्टैंडर्ड की मानकता का भी बढ़ोतरी किया जाएगा बाय ब्यूरो ऑफ इंडियन स्टैंडर्ड रिमेम्बर दिस की वर्ड हु इज इंप्लीमेंटिंग एजेंसी बीआईएस बीआईएस जो कि स्टार रेटिंग दे रही है दैट एजेंसी अगेन इज प्रोवाइडिंग द स्टैंडर्डाइजेशन ऑफ ऑल द प्रोडक्ट्स अंडर वन मिशन वन स्टैंडर्ड देन रिसर्च एंड डिजाइन स्टैंडर्ड आरडीएस ऑफ इंडियन रेलवेज so wto technical badges of trade do india is a signatory of wto world trade organization ka india signatory hai jiske chalte india ko trade mein bahut sari cheezon mein justify karne mein challenges aati hai so there is a technical badge of trade which leads to standardization of products wto members kehte hain ki india ke wheat standardized nahi hain we see in the past history that India's cotton, India's wheat, India's rice was discriminated on the global market by saying that the standard of this wheat and rice is very poor that do not match the requirement of elite society, European society and American society. For this to prevent these things to happen, India has formed the standardization body for the regional standardization with India except comply the code of good practices for the preparation adoption and application of standards provided the annex 3 of the wto tbt agreement so wto ka again a keyword that is tbt agreement usko badhava dene ke liye application for standardization laya gaya hai now this process of one nation one standard provide that mandatory hallmarking of gold jewelry from june 16 in a phased manner yani ki 18 se 22 carat ki jo gold jewelry hai aur sone aur chandi ke jo bhi abhushan hai to unka standardized mark kiya jayega and that gold jewelry and gold on watches 
fountain pens and special type of jewelry like kundan, polki and jadau. Remember the keyword kundan, polki and jadau. These jewelries are using gold. So gold marking is a purity certificate and has been voluntary in nature so far. Now the gold bureau of Indian standardization BIS hallmarks there he has gold jewelries key. So that is one nation one standard by providing the gold jewelry a standard around 40 percent of gold jewelries has been hallmarked currently. 40 percent tak ki golden jewelry ko abhi tak hallmark de diya gaya hai and this hallmarking provides the standardization of India's jewelry around the world. So global market mein Bharat ke abhushan jab bhi export ho rahe hain to unki standardization or testing jab hoti hai that is taken under BIS and that proves the high rating of the gold and quality of the jewelry that is being sold in the market. Now it also provides the credibility of the gold jewelry also. Now next thing which was in news is e-commerce rule of 2020. So Department of Consumer Affair has provided the new consumer protection rule and e-commerce rule why there is new e-commerce rule so e-commerce entities such as amazon flipkart mantra hai na us pe aapko bahut sare saman mil jate the easily but you feel that the quality of that product was not of that much standard that was needed for you such as you bought certain mobile phone ipod or certain commodities you found it defective still they are not taking it back wo return karne se mana kar dete hain aur aap thage rah jate hain is process ko bachane ke liye government of india ne e-commerce rule ki nai guideline jari ki hai under this there should be a clear transparency accountability and responsibility for all the e-commerce traders e-commerce traders ki registration honi mandatory hai now any e-commerce trader has a mandatory registration then e-commerce trader has to pay the GST certificate and licensing about the product from 23rd July 2020 onwards yani ki 30 July 2020 ke baad se e-commerce rule bharat mein lagu ho chuka hai mitro under the consumer protection act of 2019 which pays for regulation of all the e-commerce transactions. What are the key provisions of e-commerce bill? E-commerce act ho gaya. To act ke key provisions dekhte hain. That is proposed amendments in the implication and definitions of e-commerce entity. E-commerce entity whether a small shop. Pehle hum dekhte thai ek chote se shop khol ke baithe huye hain aur maha se online registration karke apni trading kar rahe hain that again impacted the authenticity of product provided by the e-commerce entity. Now, uske baat kya ho raha hai? The entity engaged by such person for the purpose of fulfillment of ordered placed online. Koi bhi vekti agar koi bhi dukaan khol ke baitha hai, ghar pe baitha hai, aur agar wo online activity kar raha hai, purchasing and selling kar raha hai, that needs a mandatory registration and licensing under section 276 of the Companies Act of 2013 यानि कि अब Companies Act 2013 के अंतरगत उसे registration mandatory है Section 2 Clause 73 Remember this again a key word for your films as well as means Then it also sells uh, offering of goods and services for sale of marketplace e-commerce entity Further, it provides the sale of the product that is provided in the market through the entity such as those who is leading last mile delivery services. Yani ki product ban gaya Philips mein, Samsung mein aur service delivery ho rahi hai Amazon ke dwara. Now Amazon distributor should have to need a mandatory registration under section 2 clause 76 of the Companies Act of 2013. And relevant to be rules and regulations of the e-commerce entity 
by mandatory provision. Now the new rules goes for registration of e-commerce entity. Every e-commerce entity which is in operation of India shall have to register under the Department of Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade. जो भी e-commerce entity है, whether it is Flipkart, Amazon, Mintra or anybody, it has to do a minimum regulation registration under DPII. So duties of e-commerce goes to e-commerce entities mentions the name, details of the importers, identify the country of origin, provide a filter mechanism on their website. तो उनके वेबसाइट पे उन्हें सारी डिटेल्स डालनी होगी एंड फ्रॉम द फ्रॉम द प्लेस वेयर द प्रोडक्ट्स आर बीइंग मैन्युफैक्चर्ड यानी कि जापान में चाइना में कोरिया में यूएसए में कहीं भी वो प्रोडक्ट बना है तो उसकी ओरिजिन की डिटेल्स डालनी होगी एट द टाइम ऑफ गुड्स व्यू बीइंग फॉर द परचेज तो डिलीवरी के टाइम पे दोस्तों आपको एक डब्बा मिलता है डब्बे के अंदर आप देखते हुए कैमरा है या एक मोबाइल फोन है उसके ऊपर डिटेल्स लिखी रहती हैं दिस कंपनी फ्रॉम दिल्ली एंड डिलीवर्ड बाय अमेजन मैन्युफैक्चर्ड बाय फिलिप्स इंडिया एंड डेस्टिनेशन एंड सोर्स सो इस पे सारी डिटेल्स सब मेंशन करनी पड़ेगी एंड देयर शुड बी अ क्यूआर कोड आल्सो व्हिच विल अनलॉक द डिटेल्स ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट आल्सो सो प्रोडक्ट की डिटेल्स गारंटी कार्ड ऑथेंटिसिटी and the standard will all be checked under this rule to consumer ke adhikar ko surakshit rakhne ke liye ye nirdesh hai now it ensures the transparency of the commerce entity and their system of working to display promotion in the advertisement advertisement mein koi bhi agency badha chada ke dikhati hai apni cheezon ko us cheez ko cater karne ke liye ye regulations laye gaye hain and it aims for the parity between imported and domestic goods तो ये rules जो है parity भी पैदा करते हैं कि कोई भी goods foreign country से लाए गए हैं या कि India के self domestic manufactured हैं so offer additional mechanism to help consumer make the informed decision consumer सोच समझ के निर्णय ले कि product बढ़िया है या कैसा है now instruction for the consumer whether making a decision based in what country of origin products and exercises informed by the choices to unki choice making se pehle unko sari jankari mil jayegi now grievance redressal mechanism agar koi bhi product kharab nikal gaya to uske liye ab complain karni padti hai and that goes for grievance redressal so every e-commerce company shall appoint chief compliance officer ek grievance redressal officer hoga जिसे हम चीफ कॉम्प्लियंस ऑफिसर कहेंगे देन देयर विल बी नोडल कॉन्टैक्ट एंड देयर विल बी ऑफिसर्स ऑन ड्यूटी टू लुक इन टू दी ग्रीवेंस ऑफ द कंज्यूमर देन टू इंस्टीट्यूट साउंड कंज्यूमर ग्रीवेंस रिड्रेशल मैकेनिज्म देयर शुड बी एन इनफॉर्म डिसीजन फॉर द कंज्यूमर एट द सेम टाइम यानी जिस समय कंज्यूमर अपना कंप्लेन दर्ज करते हैं मित्रों उस समय ही उनके कंप्लेन का निराकरण करेगी ये प्राइवेट कंपनीज and to ensure the compliance of the rules तो इनके लिए ये सारे rules बनाए गए हैं जो कि mandatory हैं now we should look into the cross selling regulation under these products which are under the complementary product services with the intent of maximize the revenue of e-commerce entity तो कोई भी बड़ी company यानी कि Amazon, Flipkart अपनी प्रोडक्ट की सेलिंग के लिए ज्यादा से ज्यादा प्रमोशन करती हैं और क्रॉस सेलिंग भी करती हैं यानी कि दे परचेज प्रोडक्ट फ्रॉम अदर इंटिटीज अदर मार्केट्स एंड होलसेल रिटेलर्स उनकी भी वाचिंग की जाएगी देन क्रॉस इंटेंट फॉर दी ट्रांसपेरेंसी एंड प्रिवेंटिंग एनी प्रैक्टिस दैट मे बी मिसलीडिंग द कंज्यूमर्स तो कोई ऐसे बढ़ा चढ़ा के दिए गए एडवर्टीजमेंट कोई भी प्रचार प्रसार उन सभी चीजों को इस कानून के द्वारा चेक किया जाएगा एंड रेगुलेशन फॉर फ्लैश सेल फ्लैश सेल के लिए भी रेगुलेशन आ गया दैट सेल ऑर्गेनाइज बाय ई कॉमर्स इंटिटी दिवाली धमाका दशहरा धमाका होली धमाका आप देखते हैं कि बहुत सारे बिग बैश सेल लॉन्च करती है फ्लिपकार्ट अमेजन तो उस पर हम क्या करते हैं कोई भी चीजें हम सस्ते दाम पे खरीद लेते हैं 
then we see that the product is of not that standard quality which we wish to have been purchased from the market फिर हमें लगता है कि हमारे साथ धोखा हो गया दैट फॉर दैट ग्रीवेंस द रिडक्शन ऑफ प्राइस इज हाई डिस्काउंट ऑन एंड प्रोडक्ट अट्रैक्टिव ऑफर्स शुड बी चेक बाय टाइम एंड सेलेक्टिव गुड्स सो इसकी भी चेकिंग के लिए सेपरेट लॉज बनाए गए एंड टू प्रिवेंट इंस्टेंट अनअनाउंस सेल दैट मे बी मैनिपुलेटिव एंड स्पीकुलेटिव प्राइसेस then preventing the cheating and unfair trade practices on the e-commerce platform so cheating practices se badh jati hain aur bahut sare log dhokha mein galat saman khareed lete hain aur thage jate hain in sabhi thagi ki cheezon ko rokne ke liye ye kanoon bahut hi effective hai now ondc product we should look into this part under certain instant of time for this we are having the break for few duration